Hi, this is Lou Agave of Long Island Lou Tequila on Facebook, Instagram, the web, all over the place. Today, did you know that you can make your own tequila? It's been done. This is going to be educational. Guys, if you want to see how it's done from beginning to end, old school, home school. Grover Sanja Grin and his wife, Scarlett, they did it. They made tequila. They made three lots. Lotusito number one, Lotusito number two, and Lotusito number three. Go to his website, tastetequila.com. He's the one who makes the amazing free mobile app TMM that you got to have. On that site on Taste Tequila, you'll see the Lotusito log. It explains everything about how he made all three lots. He's working on lot four now. What a what a project. He he started doing this during COVID. And this is a great way to learn. You got to really, this is unbelievable. So, you know, they made this. This is small batch. This is single pina. <laughs> so you thought you heard of a artisanal small batch. How about one pina? You got about six, seven bottles out of each lot. They're all about 50, you know, the same size, 50 uh, kilo. And they're all made, they, they cook the same way in ovens from three different places i'll explain now they have different yeasts and he used glass fermentation in some and not in others and some strange things happen to one of the lots and ah oh, this is a really cool story i'm just really totally into it i'm going to show you some pictures and video later on so you 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 really don't know that you can do this the only thing you need the only thing he couldn't do was cook the pinas so he had some friends first he went to fortaleza for the first lot then he went to el pandilo for the second and then he went to Cash Queen for the third lot. They cooked the one pina. They gave it to him. He took it. He picked it out. He did all the rest. Handmade, artisanal. He did it in his own house. You imagine that. He made a little distillery in there, like a lab. It's really, really cool. So, you know, we're going to open these up right here. Now, guys, check this out. He only got, like I said, six or seven bottles out of all of these, okay? He's got these little kits, okay, that are very special to him. He's only got like one or two left. We're giving one away right here. Actually, it's going to be on my Instagram page. But you're going to get to see this right here through Facebook and YouTube and all the other stuff. But we're going to do a giveaway. And we're going to do a giveaway on Thursday night, September 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to Long Island Lou Tequila on Instagram. Grove is going to join in. We're going to have a split screen, hopefully. And he is going to pick the winner. And there might be a second and third place winner. Maybe some t-shirts. I'm not sure. So the way it looks right now is winner number one that he'll pick from whoever's visiting us that night. Thursday night, September 30th, 8 p.m. New York Eastern Time. Okay, I should say. He will pick the winner from that group. Whoever's there that night. Okay, they're going to get a kick. So, guys, you know, I mean, you can't buy the stuff. You'll never be able to. But you're going to get to taste how someone very knowledgeable was able to actually produce their own tequila and taste the differences and maybe compare the notes with me today or whoever, you know, talk to Grover personally. It's a passion thing of his, and uh, I could see why. So, join us that night. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll only be on for a little while, and we'll pick the winner, okay? So, lot number one, just so you know, here we go, lot number one. Okay, he calls them Lotusito. Lotusito meaning small batch. I'm going to take a little bit of this. So now, lot number one, I call it lot number one. It's 47.1% alcohol by volume. Now, this was uh, stainless steel fermentation, but also glass fermentation. But no fibers in anything open air. You imagine? He did a double. And then he, you know, blended them back together at the end. Champagne yeast double distilled in copper. Okay, so he's got a 20 liter copper still he bought. He actually bought a second one now. So he's got that right now. You got to see how he makes this stuff. So anyway, the first lot. Nar Narat area uh, region. Okay, it was cooked for three days. This batch from Fortaleza. Brick oven cooked, of course. Wow, this is really nice. Wow, so you know what? I'm getting like a melon. Let me tell you something. This is really interesting. I've tried hundreds of tequilas, and I'm telling you, hundreds of Blancos. That's my thing. This is really good. It's got a mint melon thing. 
First time now, uh, you know, ever, I'm ever trying this. He just sent these to me. Uh, some uh, nice uh, cinnamon, clean, like caramel for some reason. Just a, t a touch, same thing with a green apple. Really sweet. But like I say, mint and melon. I can't believe this is homemade. I'm going in. I'm going to see how this comes out. There's nothing wrong here. Oh, and yeast. Oh, and yeast pops up with that melon. Still a tinge of that caramel, interesting enough. Uh, some herbalness and some cinnamon. Wow. What a nice nose. What a nice nose of cinnamon and mint and melon. Sweetness. That's from that Coke de Gave. Now, on lot one, he tells me cut a lot of the heads and tails, okay? So, guys, you know what I mean? Heads. Tails, keep it legal, get rid of all the stuff that's not good for you. He left a lot of the heart, so maybe that's why it's so sweet and flavorful, but, you know, easy to drink and a nice smell, so maybe you lose a little complication, but you get a nice, easy to drink, smooth, smelling, nothing offensive tequila, like some brands I don't have to mention. It's just perfect for most people. This is nice when you cut a lot of heads and tails away. He said he usually cuts the heads off at 75% ABV. And 15% for the tails. That's like a normal thing. You know, you want to make sure you get all the stuff out so it's safe to drink, which it is. This was rested for 80 days, okay? Champagne yeast. So, you know, you're going to get like maybe that's where that melon, maybe a touch of fruit, you know, all of that's coming from. Wow, this has got a really nice smell. I'm getting the end yeast now on the nose, too. This is super good. This is super good. So, lot one, Lotusito one. I'll try to remember later, but this is really fantastic. I'm going to take a little bit of water right here and we're going to move on to lot two. Batch two was done at El Pandilo. Okay, so that was cooked in air ovens from Arandas. And uh, it was cooked for 22 hours, okay? So um, this one is uh, going to be different, okay? Oh, I can smell it already. Grover told me, all he told me, wow, look at the bubbles. Look at the bubbles already. That's usually a sign. That's nice, a sign of pure, high-proof kind of stuff, you know, clean. Boy, those guys, they know, they can look at bubbles, some of those old guys who can tell you exactly the proof. This is 41.9, actually. So it's even less than the other one. All right. And this guy, this was still strength, okay? No water. There's no water in here, okay? Um, this was, this is different, and I'm going to tell you why. Oh, and I can smell now why. He told me I'd be in for a surprise. This is stainless steel fermentation without fibers, and is also stainless steel with fibers. So it's a combination with and without fibers. They did it, did them separately, and then they put them together. Champagne yeast again, double distilled in copper. Wow. So this one, this one's got a little funkiness to it, but I'm loving this. It's citrusy. This one's citrusy, funky. There's nothing wrong here. Um, this is more like a mezcal, like he was telling me, I might think. And the reason he told me this one's different is he did a wider cuts, all right, from the heads and tails. But what happened here... Oh, wow, this is really cool. He took a long time, you know, macerating with this pine piece of wood I'm going to show you on the video. Uh, he usually had a helper, but he didn't this time. It took forever. And what happened was it started to ferment while it was sitting there. So, you know, that can happen. If you leave, you know, agaves out in a distillery and you don't get to them right away, they actually start to ferment with the airborne particles and that's going on you know including you know bacteria and and yeast and everything else so they start to ferment you know before you get it into the fermentation so it's like you know it's like natural yeast that's happening so wow he said it took him three days to macerate by hand three days where do you see how he did it now this guy was rested for two months and it's still strength like i say so no water yeah, this is totally different. Totally different. 
Oh my goodness. This is nice and smooth and easy and like anybody would love this. This this is my kind of thing because this has got like a, a sharpness to it, a funk. Uh, um, how do I say? It's got on yeast and, and citrus, but like a, a sharpness to it, like a like a punch. Maybe like a mezcal, maybe, but definitely, you know, it's a little different than regular tequila. Oh, I really do like this. All right. A lot of anise in my mouth, you know, licorice at the end. What I'm going to say is I love it. I still love it a lot. I think I like the nose better than the taste. That's just me. Um, it had, uh, you know, um, some call it lactic. Is That's like a sour milk maybe. I'm not sure, but I'm not really getting that on the nose at all. No, in the taste, I'm not getting, it's a little, something's a little sour, but it, the on yeast is popping out on me. I picked that up really easily. So it's nice and funky and uh, it's full of citrus and on yeast. You know, some spice. The nose is phenomenal. So the nose is better on this than, than this. Lot 2 over Lot 1. The taste is different. I can't really compare them or rate them. Because Lot 1 is smooth and easy. It's for anybody. And it's delicious. Lot 2, you got to be in the mood. You got to be you gotta be ready for Lot 2. Wow, friend, it's tangy. Tangy. That's the word I was looking for. No, I could drink this all day. This is like a really, uh, this is really a licorice. Uh, reminds me of the original uh, Siembra Valles, maybe high proof. This is really, really good. Really good. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what? Because I like things rough and wild, and even though it's less ABV, believe it or not, I think I've, so far, Lot 2 is the winner for me. It really is, although Lot 1, just, there's nothing wrong with it. Lot 3. Or as he would call it, Lotusito, number three, Thrace, is from Cashcoween, okay? And it is cooked for three days. Imagine that. And uh, this one is 44.1 ABV, okay? 44.1 ABV. He used tequila yeast. Now, remember, the other two were champagne yeast. This one is a combination of tequila yeast and rum yeast. Ooh. Done separately. Fermented separately. Okay? Then put together at the end. Excuse me. And ready for everything. It's double distilled in all glass. No stainless steel for distillation for sitting. It's all glass. All right? Closed fermentation. No fibers. So 4.1 ABV. 41.9 ABV and 47.1 ABV. Which I find hard to believe because lot one is kind of easy to drink and soft. So this guy, this one he said he cut less of the heads and tails, which as I learned once before from a master, a matter of fact, a master that's involved in this project, one of them, you get a lot more floral when you don't cut a ton of the heads and tails, mostly from the heads. You get more floral. So, yeah, there's no doubt I'm getting that. It's rested three months. So, nice. It's, it, yeah, it's got a little anise. It's got some spice. It's got, it's floral. It has a nice fragrance in, in the nose, too. Um, it's nice. There's nothing wrong with this either. Um, it's a hard one to pick, you know. He did a great job on all three. And at this point, actually, I want to show you some of the procedures that he did. So check this out. So here we see Grover picking out his pina at for the laser. Oh, there it is. It looks like he got one. That'll be for Lotusito number one. Putting it in a wheelbarrow and getting ready to get it over to the car. Load that baby up and let's get back to the uh, home distillery and get working on uh, Lotusito number one. And oh, look at that. That's a heavy one, Grover. Now he's picking out for Loke Decido number two at El Pandilo. He found one. Here he comes. Getting ready to put that in the car. They're all beautiful oven cooked piñas. All about the same size. And now he's at Cash Coin for Loke Decido number three. And he's picking out his piña. And he's weighing it. 
to make sure they're all about the same at 50 kilos. That's right. And now he's at home mashing. Look, and he's doing maceration with a wooden pine piece of wood he bought at Home Depot. No lie. And now, oh, that looks delicious. Look at that. Right at home. Oh, my goodness. He's crushing, macerating. Now he's separating fibers. He's using a sugar cane press. You believe this one? Look how little that is. No tahona here. No shredder roller. You're looking at the baby. It does the job. And he's getting ready. He's squeezing it all out. He's doing the mashing. And he's he's getting ready. Oh, look at that. He's he's getting his hands dirty. And now he's even checking the sugar levels. That'll happen before fermentation. First, you got to pitch the yeast. So that's about what he's getting ready to do here. And it looks like uh, fermentation is on the way. That's champagne yeast. That's what he used a lot of the times. Fermentation's happening now. You can see those bubbles coming in now. That's a beautiful sight. And, you know, you got some uh, tequila on the way here, guys. What an experience this had to be. I got to tell you, now he's putting it into the copper pot stills. And those are 20 liters. And, oh, this is going to be great. He's got his own homemade cooling system set up right here. He has the ice there. And he's going to condense it, a whole thing. And uh, we're going to be making some tequila now. And I got to tell you, what a, what a situation he's got here. He really did it right. Checking out all the alcohol levels. A lot of notes being taken here. He's going to take a taste of it now. And I have a feeling he's going to like it. And this is a Lotusito Project by Grover and Scarlett. Some project, huh? I mean, <laughs> is that cool or what? Imagine doing that in your house. You didn't know you could make your own tequila, right? As long as you got a buddy who will cook it for you. But actually, he's ready to buy an autoclave. A little small autoclave. So now... He could do the whole thing himself. I can't wait for that. That might be uh, lot four or maybe lot five. Okay, I'm not sure if he uh, actually got it yet. Now, you know, we can't call this tequila technically. Why? You know why? Because the CRT wasn't present to supervise, all right? Um, you know, I asked him one day, will you ever be a nom? Is it possible? He has a distiller in his house now, as you saw. Um, some people say yes. Some people say no. Um, it depends on a lot of different the laws, the way it would work and all that. Because, you know, uh, a nom is a group of people in a work area, you know. So it, it's kind of possible, right? But in any case, not approved by the CRT. So this is an agave distillate. That's what this is, all right? Agave distillate. So, you know, you only get six or seven bottles per lot, okay, like I discussed. You saw how he does everything by hand, the maceration with the sugar cane, shredder. Isn't that really cool? And, uh... You know, it's just a great project. And don't forget the giveaway. You got to go to my Instagram page, LongIslandLewTequila.com. Uh, that's my website. You can go to Long Island Lou Tequila on Instagram. Of course, I'm on everything now, TikTok, YouTube, you know, everywhere. Just go there, okay? On Thursday night, September 30th, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Me and Grover are going to come on there, and somebody can win one of the last, I think there's only one or two left, one of the last remaining kits. Of his homemade tequila, which is phenomenal. It's amazing. Maybe you can then go over and we can go over the notes. You can get in touch with me or go over and we can talk about it. See what you think about it. So you got to be there 8 p.m., okay? On Thursday, September 30th on my Instagram page, all right? And please, you know, I don't make any money doing any of this stuff. Just like and follow all my stuff, all right? So final decisions now, all right? This is it. Not that, not that you know, it's a contest in that sense, but... I just want to, I think he wants to see as well what I thought um, of the three lots. So I think I told you almost just about everything I need to tell you. Of course, there's no notes to go by or anything like that. Nobody has uh, really reviewed any of this. The nose, nice and easy. A little light vanilla now, actually, along with some of that stuff I said before. Mint, melon, a little caramel, which is weird. Cinnamon, green apple, nice and sweet. Nothing wrong, so easy. If I was rating it on Tequila Matchmaker, <laughs> uh, let's see. Geez, something like this. I'm not kidding you. I tried a lot of tequilas. This is really good. I give it an 89.90. I really would. I really would. So now we're going to go on a lot too. The nose, oh, it's that funky, um, I don't know, it's not so much sour, but it's a funky, sharp nose, got a lot of spirit to this guy, it's different, hard to rate them for nose, uh, 
It's so funky and citrusy. See? This is like standard. Good standard. This is out of control, wild stuff that's great also. But, you know, I'm crazy. Oh, the green apple's popping out. I'm, I'm a little nuts, so I go for adventure. So I say nose on two, um, over nose on one. Yeah, real floral, different. Some in yeast and stuff. Tough call. Uh, for nose, number two. Second place for nose, number one. Third place for nose, number three. Okay? For taste. Once again. Now the licorice is nice. I like the wild, sour, funk. Taste two over one. Taste two. Two's the winner so far for me. I'm going to go with one for taste, second place, and three for taste, third place. So, two is the guy for me. It's wacky, it's crazy, but it's really good. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I see you all on my Instagram page, Long Island Loot Tequila, on Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That would be September 30th. Grover is going to give away a set of his lote, his... Uh, Lotusito project, which is out of control, and it's like nothing left. He's got like one kit left and some t-shirts. So I hope you join us there. Long Island Loot Tequila. Salud.